The National Commission on Terrorist Attacks upon the United States, also known as the 9-11 Commission, was set up on November 27, 2002, "...to prepare a full and complete account of the circumstances surrounding the September 11 attacks," including preparedness for and the immediate response to the attacks. The Commission was also mandated to provide recommendations designed to guard against future attacks. Chaired by former New Jersey Governor Thomas Keene, the commission consisted of five Democrats and five Republicans. The commission was created by congressional legislation, with the bill signed into law by President George W. Bush. The commission's final report was lengthy and based on extensive interviews and testimony. Its primary conclusion was that the failures of the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency CIA and Federal Bureau of Investigation FBI permitted the terrorist attacks to occur and that if these agencies acted more wisely and more aggressively, the attacks could potentially have been prevented. After the publication of its final report, the commission closed on August 21, 2004. The commission's website was shut down, but has been archived. History The National Commission on Terrorist Attacks upon the United States was established on November 27, 2002, by President George W. Bush and the United States Congress, with former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger initially appointed to head the commission. However, Kissinger resigned only weeks after being appointed, because he would have been obliged to disclose the clients of his private consulting business. Former U.S. Senator George Mitchell was originally appointed as the vice chairman, but he stepped down on December 10, 2002, not wanting to sever ties to his law firm. On December 15, 2002, Bush appointed former New Jersey Governor Tom Keene to head the commission. By the spring of 2003, the commission was off to a slow start, needing additional funding to help it meet its target day for the final report, of May 27, 2004. In late March, the Bush administration agreed to provide an additional $9 million for the commission, though this was $2 million short of what the commission requested. The first hearings were held from March 31 to April 1, 2003, in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> Members Thomas Keene Chairman, Republican, former Governor of New Jersey Lee H. Hamilton, Vice Chairman, Democrat, former U.S. Representative from the 9th District of Indiana. Richard Benveniste, Democrat, attorney and former chief of the Watergate Task Force of the Watergate Special Prosecutor's Office. Max Cleland, Democrat, former U.S. Senator from Georgia. Resigned in December 2003, stating that, The White House has played cover up. Fred F. Fielding, Republican, attorney and former White House counsel member. Jamie Gorilick, Democrat, former Deputy Attorney General in the Clinton administration. Slade Gorton, Republican, former U.S. Senator from Washington. Bob Carey, Democrat, President of the New School University and former U.S. Senator from Nebraska. He replaced Max Cleland as a Democratic commissioner, after Cleland's resignation. John F. Lehman, Republican, former Secretary of the Navy Timothy J. Romer, Democrat, former U.S. Representative from the 3rd District of Indiana James R. Thompson, Republican, former Governor of Illinois the Members of the Commission's staff included Philip D. Zelikow, Executive Director, Chair Christopher Kojum, Deputy Executive Director Daniel Marcus, General Counsel John J. Farmer, Senior Counsel Janice Keffart, Counsel Alvin S. Felsenberg, Spokesman Officials called to testify Then government officials who were called to testify before the commission included George W. Bush, President, testimony not under oath. The session was not officially transcribed because the White House considered it a private meeting, in which highly classified information would be discussed. Asked to limit the length of testimony to one hour, however, the meeting lasted for three hours and ten minutes. Testimony took place in the Oval Office. Initially, Bush insisted that he testify only to the chairman and vice chairman of the commission, but later agreed to testify before the full panel. Dick Cheney, vice president, testimony not under oath. 
The session was not officially transcribed because the White House considered it a private meeting in which highly classified information would be discussed. Testimony took place in the Oval Office. George John Tenet, Director of Central Intelligence Agency Colin Powell, Secretary of State Donald H. Rumsfeld, Secretary of Defense Condoleezza Rice, National Security Advisor Richard Armitage, Deputy Secretary of State Paul Wolfowitz, Deputy Secretary of Defense Tom Ridge, Secretary of Homeland Security and former Governor of Pennsylvania John Ashcroft, Attorney General Past government officials who were called to testify before the commission included Bill Clinton, former president, testified in private separately from Al Gore. Testimony was recorded and not limited in time. Al Gore, former vice president, testified in private separately from Bill Clinton. Testimony was recorded and not limited in time. Madeleine Albright, former Secretary of State William Cohen, former Secretary of Defense Sandy Berger, former National Security Advisor Richard A. Clark, former Chief Counterterrorism Advisor on the National Security Council in the George W. Bush and Bill Clinton administrations Janet Reno, former Attorney General Sibel Edmonds, former FBI translator President George W. Bush, Vice President Dick Cheney, former President Bill Clinton, and former Vice President Al Gore all gave private testimony. President Bush and Vice President Cheney insisted on testifying together and not under oath, while Clinton and Gore met with the panel separately. As National Security Advisor, Condoleezza Rice claimed that she was not required to testify under oath because the position of National Security Advisor is an advisory role, independent of authority over a bureaucracy and does not require confirmation by the Senate. Legal scholars disagree on the legitimacy of her claim. Eventually, Condoleezza Rice testified publicly and under oath. Report. The Commission issued its final report on July 22, 2004. After releasing the report, Commission Chair Thomas Keene declared that both Presidents Bill Clinton and George W. Bush were not well served by the FBI and CIA. The Commission interviewed over 1,200 people in 10 countries and reviewed over 2.5 million pages of documents, including some closely guarded classified national security documents. Before it was released by the Commission, the final public report was screened for any potentially classified information and edited as necessary. Additionally, the Commission has released several supplemental reports on the terrorists' financing, travel, and other matters. Criticism <inaudible> 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 The Commission was criticized for alleged conflicts of interest on the part of commissioners and staff e.g., Philip D. Zelikow, 9-11 Commission Executive Director, Chair in 1995 co-authored a book with Condoleezza Rice. Further, the Commission's report has been the subject of criticism by both commissioners themselves and by others. <laughs> Work of commissioners after the Commission ceased its functions Months after the Commission had officially issued its report and ceased its functions, Chairman Keane and other commissioners toured the country to draw attention to the recommendations of the Commission for reducing the terror risk, claiming that some of their recommendations were being ignored. Co-chairs Keane and Hamilton wrote a book about the constraints they faced as commissioners titled Without Precedent, The Inside Story of the 9-11 Commission. The book was released on August 15, 2006 and chronicles the work of Keane Commission Chairman and Hamilton Commission Vice Chairman of the 9-11 Commission. In the book, Keane and Hamilton charge that the 9-11 Commission was set up to fail and write that the Commission was so frustrated with repeated misstatements by officials from the Pentagon and the Federal Aviation Administration during the investigation that it considered a separate investigation into possible obstruction of justice by Pentagon and FAA officials. NORAD testimony John Farmer, Jr., senior counsel to the Commission stated that the Commission "...discovered that 
less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 what government and military officials had told Congress, the Commission, the media, and the public about who knew what when was almost entirely, and inexplicably, untrue. Farmer continues, at some level of the government, at some point in time, there was a decision not to tell the truth about what happened. The NORAD tapes told a radically different story from what had been told to us and the public. Thomas Keane, the head of the 9-11 Commission, concurred. We to this day don't know why NORAD told us what they told us, it was just so far from the truth. 